Lord. 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 What a mighty God you are. 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 Mighty God you are. Heaven and earth adore you, Lord. Angels bow before you, Lord. What a mighty God you are. 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 Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. What a mighty God you are. What a mighty God you are. Heaven and earth adore you, Lord. Angels bow before you, Lord. What a mighty God you are. What a mighty God you are. There is none holy as our God. Holy as our God. There is none. Inside you, inside you, my dear. Inside you, my dear. There are any of life. I God. There is no holy, holy as a God. There is no holy as a God. Holy as a God. There is no other being inside you. Inside you. Neither is there are any wrong life. There is no holy God. Just wanted to worship God. He's a faithful God. Just tell him thank you. Just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, blessed be your name, O God. Thank you, Lord. I give you thanks, O God. I give you praise. I give you adoration. You are also God. And also God. Oh, you answer prayers. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. From January to December, we thank you. That you hear. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord. Thank you for today's Bible study. Commit it into your hands. We ask God that you lead us today. Teach us those things you want us to know so that we can improve our relationship with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and everyone shall say, Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. So happy to be back on this channel for our weekly Bible study. It's been three weeks now that we have not met. I was away to Nigeria doing the works, Lord, and the work, and the, and the, the, the lost yeah, work, yeah. and uh, the Lord magnified his name in the mission. It was a wonderful outing. It was inspiring. The people were blessed. I received a voice message from someone yesterday or two days ago saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I returned the glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, when I came back from work this evening, evening, I was a little bit tired. After setting up the system, I said, let me lie down. I said, Lord, wake me up at 6.30. Wake me up at 6.30. Amen. Amen. As I was struggling to get up at 6.30, not on my own accord, my phone rang. It was 6.31. It's a faithful God. God is faithful. It's, a, it's an accurate timekeeper. Amen. Amen. And today, by the grace of God, we are studying lateness and absenteeism. God does not come late. Amen. Amen. You know, the topic of our discussion is little foxes that spoiled the vine. Who is the vine? You are the vine. Remember, Jesus said, 
Jesus said he's the vine, we are the branches, right? We, we are the branches. So whatever happens to the vine is happens to the branches because the branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it's attached to the vine. And so what are those things that we are doing that can affect our relationship with God? We have discussed murmuring and grumbling. Memory as a Christian, memory as a pattern of prayers. The children of Israel, they were used to memory complaining. They complain about Moses, their leader. They complain about their food. And that is what it is today. We are always complaining. Because we are not grateful for what we have, we are always thinking of, about what we don't have, and that put complain in our lives, and God hates complain. Amen. Mm -hmm. God hates complain. Complain is, a, is as a result of ingratitude. If we are grateful for what we have, then in our, in, at our work, we said appreciation is application for more. When you say, God, thank you for what I have, he's going to do more for you. Amen. Amen. Who complain in, in our prayers. Most of the time, our prayer is not actually a prayer that connects us with God. Is, is God not aware of my situation? And look at how I am. Look at how things are. Complain, murmuring, even in prayers. And today, we are discussing, then we, we thereafter discuss keeping grudges and malice. You are angry with somebody. It, it, it's more terrible when the person does not know that you are angry of him or her. You have not told the person that what he or she did to you is wrong. You're not happy about it, but you are just angry. You're keeping malice. I used to say maybe the person you correct with or you have problem with is, is A. And anytime you hear the name A, you are angry. Whether it is that very person or not, as long as that name suggests or is, is similar to the other person, your anger went up. From being angry, it becomes a kind of demonic possession where bitterness enters your heart. Bitterness enters your heart as a result of what the person, I'm not saying that what the person did is right. The person actually offended you. But by the time it is converted from anger to bitterness, it becomes a kind of demonic possession. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And the preacher said, be angry about somebody or about something. It's like drinking poison and expecting your enemy to die. Who suffers it? You. I. If I'm angry about you, if I'm angry about the country, if I'm angry about the system, if I, it's worse when I'm, somebody is angry about God. Is angry with God. God is the cause of my problem. Amen? Amen. Grudge is not of God. These are little things that we want to, uh, to get rid of from our lives. There are, so, the, some people say that uh, put sins in category like adultery, fornication, idolatry. You may want to classify them as big sins or mortal sin. Of venial sins. No, for me, sin is sin. Sin is sin. And the consequences of any unrepented sin is life in eternity with the devil. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today we're going to discuss uh, lateness and absenteeism. Shall we please turn our scriptures to Ephesians chapter 5? Verse 16, Ephesians 5, 16, then Colossians, then Colossians 5, uh, 4, 5, it's off it. Colossians 4, 5, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8, and verse 17. Praise the Lord. Uh, Ike, can you please read Ephesians 5, 16? Uh, Todd, please read Colossians 
four, five. Anthony, please help us with Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8 and verse 17. Let's start with IK. Uh, Ephesians of 5 or 16. Yes, please. Redeem me the time mm. because the days are evil. Amen. Amen. What does it say? Redeem me the time. Why? Because the days are evil. What does it mean to redeem time? Save time. Save time. Praise the Lord. Don't waste time. Time it is difficult to reclaim time wasted. So do what you have to do on time. It is better to be early, too early to a meeting to work than to come late. Redeem me the time because the days are evil. That passage also talks about refers to evangelism or doing the work of God. Do not postpone the work of God that you are supposed to do. Redeem the time because the days are evil. If you postpone it, it will become more difficult for you to do it. Praise the Lord. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Amen. Amen. Evil days are here with us. If there is any time that is evil, it is now. Making the best of the time, this phrase, uh, uh, the RSV revised standard said, making the best of the time. Let's take it from verse 15. Look carefully there how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. So, which is it? Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Amen. Mm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Redeeming the time or the days, uh, making good of the time, it says, redeem or purpose. Christians must. Actively take advantage of the opportunity to do good. Wisdom is especially needed in an evil age where the path way of holiness is not always immediately clear until one reflects upon God's word and descend his holy will. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. What is that scripture saying? The days are evil. Make good use of your time, both in your work with God, in your career, in your studies. Do not postpone an assignment. Your, your assignment is due, for instance, next week, Wednesday. You say, oh, today's Wednesday, I have time. You don't have time. Something can happen. You may fall sick before that day. Or somebody close to you may, may be sick. Or somebody close to you may, may, may have a terrible situation that would take your time. If you had not made good use of your time, you will not be able to submit your assignment. And when you fail, you don't, it, it doesn't give glory to God because it is the will of God for us to prosper. Amen. Mm-hmm. The only thing that we all have Equally, it's time. 24 hours in a day. I have to say 24 hours in a, in, a, in a day. The Premier of Ontario has to say 24 hours in a day. The Prime Minister has to say 24 hours in a day. The Prime Minister may have more money and more responsibility than the Premier. The Premier may be richer and has more responsibility than myself. But we have equal time. How are we using our time, both spiritually, secularly, and academically, make the best use of the time. In these days, there are several distractions that can steal the time. The social media is there, the Facebook, TikTok, uh, uh, WhatsApp, Instagram, 
is there. It takes your time. It takes my time. Redeem me the time. Have you noticed that when you want to pray, I, it, it happens to me. I want to pray. That is where sleep comes. But if I'm, my, my WhatsApp sleep will not, easily, will not come easily. Amen. The days are evil. Praise the Lord. Somebody can just speak, start talking to you and takes the whole of your time. Redeem the time. Make good use of it. Say, look carefully how you walk, not as unwise or foolish men, but as wise men. Amen. So if you are not careful, you can just waste your time. A preacher said, avoid time wasters and time killers. Praise the Lord. Avoid time wasters and time killers. And somebody will say, is it not rude for me to say, hey, I, I, I'm busy. You don't have to please everybody to displease yourself. Because you've got to redeem your time. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Amen. Let's look at the next quotation, Colossians 4, 5, Brother Todd. Can you please look at Colossians 4, 5 for me? Todd, are you there? Okay. Yes, I am. Yes. Thought, please. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Give me a, just a second here. Walking with them towards uh, outsiders, making the best uh, use of your of the time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the time. Verse six said, "Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that ye may know." how you ought to answer each person. We're talking about time. Time is of essence in every project. If you're not conscious of your time, you will not complete your assignment well as an individual, in your place of work, in your spiritual work. We'll come to the spiritual aspect of it. But generally, let's make good use of, of the time. There is time for everything. This Bible study starts at seven o'clock. It has been programmed. 15 minutes to the time my phone reminds me about Bible study. Have an alarm that wakes you up. Set your alarm to wake you up for your prayers, for your studies, for everything that you have to do. So when you are dealing with outsiders, Make use your time effectively. Your friend visits you when you are supposed to be praying. Sorry, I am busy. It, it may sound rude. Praise the Lord. Amen. I can be my problem is that these guys, for instance, you are taking your son for a hockey game or for sports, you keep to it. But when it comes to the work of God. We're kind of careless about it. If you are running late to work, you call your supervisor and say, I'll be running late. I'll be 10 minutes late. But when you are running late to church or you're not coming at all, you don't bother to call your pastor. Because we take the work of God carelessly. We, we treat it with levity. It shouldn't be. If God should treat us the way we treat him, a lot of things will get spoiled. Are we together? Like I said, this evening I came back from work. I was tired. I set up the system. I knew, I knew that I had about 
45 minutes to one hour to sleep. I laid down on the couch here. I said, Lord, wake me up at 6.30 so that I can continue the setup and prepare for these studies. And he did. He's faithful to the time. Let us be like him and be faithful to our time. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. Anthony? Yeah, I'm here. To everything, there's a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to, to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Amen. Amen. There is time for everything. Praise the Lord. There's a time to be born. And there is time to die. He said, for everything, for everything there is a season. Everything under the earth, there is a season. Amen. Amen. And God arranges them. If you are not where you are supposed to be at the right time, you will not get what God has arranged for you. And you will miss opportunities if you don't follow God's timing. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. There's a time to plant. I tell students that this is your planting period. So work very hard. What are you planting? You are planting, you are developing skills. You are gaining knowledge and wisdom. And this will determine where you walk tomorrow. Amen. Amen. This is your planted time. Please do not waste your time. Face your studies seriously. Every other thing is secondary. Yet you have to work. That is why the, 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 the system allows a student to work for 20 hours a week instead of 40 hours a week than that other people uh, uh, work. And I tell my kids that your priority now is not to make money, but it's to have the knowledge and the skill. It is the knowledge and the skill that you have that determines the kind of job you get tomorrow. And the kind of job you get tomorrow will determine the, 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 your, your income, your resources. You might have a very generous heart to help your family, to contribute to the work of the kingdom. But if you don't have the money, you are going to live a life of regret. So as a student, as a young man, this is your planting period. Please don't allow anything to distract you or to take you away from your planting. It is what you sow that you reap. If you cannot plant potatoes, and reap, uh, you cannot plant mangoes and reap oranges. No, it is what you plant that you reap. Plant where now? Make good use of your time. Redeeming the time. Be wise and not be foolish. Amen. Amen. It's time to plant, it's time to pluck up what is planted. At old age, on your youthful, after your, your uh, adolescent age, your, 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 your studentship age, then you are working. You can now work and make money. Don't rush after money now. By the time you plant well, now money will rush after you later. Employers of labor, labor will look for you. Praise the Lord. And it is what you have that God will bless. 
He that sows sparingly will reap sparingly. But he that sows bountifully will reap bountifully. bountifully. So in your academics, put in more time. In your investment, put in more time. You will have time to play later on. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Time to kill and time to heal. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, the enemy attacks you. You have to defend yourself. There is time for war and time for peace. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Time to weep and time to laugh. He said, rejoice with those who are rejoicing and weep with those who are weeping. If a brother or a friend is bereaved, go there and sympathize with the person, weep with the person. If the person is celebrating, go there and celebrate with the person. There is time for everything. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Time to embrace and time to refrain from embracing. Okay, this boils down to you arranging your time. I need to sleep. And if you're a visitor, I'll tell you, I need to sleep. It may sound rude, but I need to sleep. If I don't catch this sleep now, I may not be able to wake up on time to do my studies as a student or to do my uh, prayer as a pastor. There is time for everything. Time to tear down and time to sow. Time to keep and time to cast away. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. There is time for everything. Please appropriate, use your time appropriately. Don't waste it. If you waste it, it will be more difficult for you to recover it in the future. I need you to have a good grip of this tiny thing and pass it to your children. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. My honor say, Daddy, you are like this. I want to go fast, fast. I have my program set. My little girl, love is she, if love wants to go out at 10.30, she's programmed to go out at 10.30. By 9.55, 9.50, she's at the door. She's putting on her shoes. 10, uh, if you need to go, go out at 10 o'clock, by 9.55, she's putting on her shoes. 10 o'clock, she's right inside the car. Praise the Lord. Amen. Arrange your time. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we look at First uh, Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31? Is that you? Okay. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. First Corinthians 10, 31. verse 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. In the use of your time, whether it is for eating, is for drinking, do all to the glory of God. Everything to the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? Oh, I have a question. Yes, please. How do you how do you usually um, block out your time? Do you write out your do you write out your days or do you put a reminder on your phone? How do you usually organize your day to make your day effective? Yeah, I, I have I have my schedule. For instance. I wake up by 4.30. My alarm is set 4.30 to wake up. Once I wake up at 4.30, I start to sing and pray. I set my alarm again at 5 o'clock. So 4.30 to 5, I'm singing and praying. 5 o'clock, my alarm rings again. It's telling me it's time to start to read your Bible. I start to do my devotionals, read my uh, the, the devotionals sent to me from by others, I'll go to the, all the devotions that have been sent to me and I read them. By six o'clock, I am done reading, meditating, and I start to send out. By 
6.15, I am making my breakfast. And by uh, 6.50, I'm heading to 6.57, I'm driving to work. Like that every day. The idea of sleeping over, that is why now that we have adjusted our time for to have our Sunday service at eight o'clock, it, it, it suits me very well because I wake up very early. Why do I wake up early to do my devotionals? So that I will not be distracted at that time. My phones will not, there's no person that wants to call me at 4.30. Even if somebody calls me at 4.30 because of time difference, I'm not going to take your call at that time because that is the time I have with God. When I was a student, uh, I say, when I was a student, I had my time follow like that. After lectures, get back to my hostel, I take a nap for one hour, get up again, go take my uh, lunch or dinner, as the case may be, I head for class. I know what, if I'm tired, again, this is the, the balance. If I know I'm supposed to be reading now, for I'm supposed to read for three, four hours. If I discover I am tired and sleeping on top of my books, I'll close the books, go and sleep, and wake up and come back to it again. There's a time to pluck, to, to pluck, to plant, and there's a time to reap. There's a time to, to pluck up what has been planted. Praise the Lord. So mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says, write it down. Write this thing. If you don't write it, you won't get used to it. And by the time you write it, you start to practice it, you get used to it. It's very important. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I showed somebody my schedule for my trip. Every day, I knew where I should be and the time I should be there. If somebody is going to drive me, I tell the person, well ahead of time, this is when I want to be in this man's house or at that church or at that meeting, you will be driving me. I want you available at that period. If, I'm, if, if you are going to be with me, I make sure that I carry you along with my time. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So manage your time properly. Don't allow somebody else to manage your time for you. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. When I was a student, uh, I was reading in my, in my room and some of my friends came. They wanted to talk with me, share that my time. I knew they were exhausted. They just wanted to take a break from their studies. And they came when I had not exhausted my time. I told them, sorry, not now. You have come to distract me. I won't allow you to distract me, not now. Praise the Lord. Manage your time. Learn to say yes or say no, not trying to hurt somebody or try to displease others. Try to, try to displease yourself to please others, especially when time management is involved. Have I answered your question? Yeah. Okay. Any other question on time management? Discover that at our church now, we have to finish 9.30 and start to clean up because another group comes to take over the hall at 10 o'clock. We have to respect the other people's time by coming on time, finishing what we have to do. The Bible says that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. We, 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 we had a meeting, a crusade some time ago, and I called a brother, I said, brother, you are going to, uh, this is the schedule. He said, the spirit will lead. I said, no, I have drawn the schedule in agreement with the Holy Spirit. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. As the chairman of the crusade planning committee, I had a read, we had prayed, we have drawn the program. So it is time for us to eat. It is time for us to sleep. It is time for us to pray. It is time for us to go on street a prayer walk. Don't disrupt it. Amen. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Let's look at Matthew. Any other questions or contributions? 
want to thank you. Thank you, James, for being with us this evening. Uh, I know it's your first time, right? Uh, the Lord will help us. You have come at a very good time when we are talking about little forces that spread the vine. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. I will get back to IK again. IK, Matthew 25, uh, 1 to 13. Then, Todd, you read uh, Hebrews 10, 25. And Anthony, you read Acts 2.42. Ike, you are reading for us Matthew 25, 1 to 13. Todd, uh, Hebrews 10, 25, and Anthony, Acts 2.42. Let's use the time. Matthew 25, 1. Yes, please. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be lightened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. When the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bargain came, and that Excuse me, and they that were read that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. 13. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour, wherein the Son of Man cometh. Amen. Thank you very much. That's a very familiar passage of scripture. I wonder if we remember it every time. Ten virgins, ten Christian sisters, ten gentlemen in the fellowship, they were set for a program. They were taught by the same pastor, trained in the same school. They were to meet the bridegroom. Something happened, and the bridegroom did not come on time. Let us have foresight. Prepare for eventualities. Amen? Mm -hmm. When you are drawing your budget, have a reserve. Don't spend all the money you have. Plan your resources, your, your time, your income. Plan it. Have a savings. Five of them were described as wise. If, if, if you're careful, go to scriptures and look at people that were described as foolish. Those that didn't use their time where they were described as foolish. These guys that didn't use their resources well, they were also described as foolish. Five of them took extra oil. We're in a civilized, we have a civilized system but you still need to plan. When you are traveling, have extra money. Anything may happen. I was traveling in a, I was in a taxi back home this few weeks that I was home. And there was a lady in the cab with me. She didn't have enough money to pay her fare. And the driver was going to insult her. If I didn't have extra, I would not have been able to help. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Have extra. In the case of these five virgins, when the bridegroom came, they knocked, and they had to trim their lamp. They discovered that they were short of oil. Their lamp had gone off. But the wise were topped their own. Don't wait for your gas tank to dry off before you buy. 
Don't say, oh, my gas tank, uh, I'm going to Scarborough, I'll buy on the way. What stops you from buying, you're from traveling from Newmarket to Scarborough? And you already noticed that your gas tank is going down, the gauge is, is, is going down. Stop and buy. You might meet traffic on the way and you have to keep your car running. And before you get to Scarborough, at the middle of nowhere, your engine goes off. You, you, are run, you run out of fuel, out of gas. Amen. Plan your life. The five were trim, uh, top their, their lamps, and the other ones came begging. Don't be the one to beg and the convenience yourself and the convenience others. It is not easy to beg. Praise the Lord. Not saying if you are in need, you should not ask. But plan your time and your resources in such a way, your budget in such a way. Some people are planning events. They want their events or ceremonies to be like the other person's ceremony. Whereas you don't have the same budget. It can't be. They say, cut your coat according to your size. But I say, cut your coat according to your spendable income. Amen. I must use a brand new suit. I can launder the one I have before. Time. Time management, resources management. It doesn't mean that when, the, 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 when, when, when there's money, you, you eat and throw away. You buy excess food, some guest point, and towards the end of the month, you are broke. No, you shouldn't be broke. If you cut your coat according to your income, you will not be broke. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then these five one, five foolish ones came and said, share with us. Say, if I share with you, it will not be, it will never be enough for me or for you. By the time I share my own with you, it will not be enough for me, it will not be enough for you. Both of us will lose out. Therefore, go and plan your life so that your life does not become dependent on another person or inconvenience another person tomorrow. It's very important as Christians. Let us be wise. Like I said before, I'm saying again, young folk, young brethren in class in school, adolescent, young adults, this is your plenty period. Go for the best. Read, invest in your time, your, your time in yourself now, so that in the future you will have enough for your parents, you have enough for your family, you have enough for the church. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's very, very important. Is it will it will it amount to selfishness if I tell you that I do not have to give to you now? Oh, he doesn't always have. It's always giving, he's supposed to, uh, somebody said, they will say all fingers are not equal. And the preacher say, why must your own finger be the smallest? We agree that all fingers are not equal. And all fingers cannot be equal, shouldn't be equal, it's a parable. But why should your own finger be the smallest that will always need to be assisted? The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. The wise one said to the foolish one, Go by, and by the time they went, the time they came back, the bridegroom has shut the door. End of story. The door is shut. I can't open for you anymore. Now that we are alive, let us invest our time and our resources in the work of the kingdom so that when Jesus comes, we will be ready. Praise the Lord. Amen. Remember, we're talking about redeeming the time. Lateness and absenteeism. Lateness. Praise the Lord. Yes, Brad. Uh, Todd, Hebrews 10 25. Yeah, we... oh, oh. What was that again? Hebrews 10 25. Three? 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. Give me a second here. Uh, 
Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great re reward. No, Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 25. 25. Yeah. Not neglected to meet together as, it, as, as is the, the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Amen. The day is drawing near. Not neglecting to meet together. Don't absent yourself from Bible studies. Don't absent yourself from the church. Don't absent yourself from the work of the ministry. As you are going, encourage one another. Say, so not neglect to meet together. As it is a habit of some, there are some people it, they will come to fellowship, they will come to church, they will come for Bible study, they will come for any program. Some will come, they will come late. When, while we are growing up, we, we, we belong to the youth movement and um, they say, we, we have to fill uh, on our attendance card, our card, there is regular and punctual. Regular, but not punctual, not regular. This person comes to church every, every Wednesday or every Sunday, as the case may be, but it's not never regular. It's a habit. Fellowship starts at 7 p.m. He will come for fellowship, but he will be 10 minutes, 15 minutes late. Regular, not punctual. The other one is not regular. Then the other one is regular, and punctual. Which are you? Which of this group do you, do you belong? And how can you be described? Then he said, encourage one another. When we are preparing for church, I can start singing, shouting, jujaring people up. Let's go to church. We'll go to church at seven o'clock. Church starts at seven o'clock. I'm encouraging you, but I won't allow you to delay me. If you don't come, I'll leave you because I'm going to give account of myself to God and you're going to give account. I've encouraged you by waking you up, by telling you the need for to prepare early and by having this Bible study to train us. Not neglecting the assemblies of an, before, before COVID 2020, uh, 2019, before 20, COVID, we were all going to church, but now COVID came, went on, online, which is good. Otherwise, Bible, starting Bible study would have been a little bit difficult for me. Then after COVID, people are finding difficult to come back to the church because they feel comfortable watching the message online. But you will agree with me that it cannot be as refreshing as it is if you were there. That is why people go to the stadium to watch games you could have sat in your home turn on your tv and watch the game but you see pay and go to the stadium to watch the game we're not asking you to pay to come to church come to church let's fellowship together let's have that touch of oneness let's encourage one another he said 25 not neglecting to meet together as it is habit of so, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the days are drawing near. What day is drawing near? Judgment day. Second coming of Christ or my death. So time is running. A, a, a preacher says it's not time that is running, it's your life that is running. Pick your picture of a photograph 10 years ago and the one of this year, you are going to see how much you have aged, changed, and depreciated. As you see that the day is drawing near. So let us make good use of the time now. While we have the energy, while we have the resources, let us serve the Lord. 
Amen. Amen. A time will come, maybe at 90, 100, you might not be able to go to church. But you, should, you may be able to sit down and tell stories to your grandchildren and great-grandchildren, not just biological children, but spiritual children to tell them how life was in your days. And your stories can be a source of encouragement to them. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So please, let me remind us again that we have changed this, our service time, Sunday service time from 10 a.m. To, uh, to 8 a.m. Start 8 a.m. on the dot, finish at 9.30, clean up by 10 o'clock, we are done. And you have the rest of the day. Like I said, I, I leave my house early 7 a.m. driving to work so that I can start work at 8 o'clock where I'm paid money that has no, that does not have as much value as the one in heaven. Praise the Lord. So if I can go to work where I'm paid salaries, why can't I come to church where I'm not paid salary, but I'm protected? My security is there. My provision is there. My blessing is there. Amen. Mm -hmm. You are laying treasures for yourself where rob robbers cannot attack. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Want to say something? Yeah. yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just redeeming the time. Uh, some of us, we discover that sometimes uh, we make effort not to be late for activities and yet we are still late. For instance, waking up. There, there, there is definitely uh, we putting our own effort into waking up. You see, sometimes you set your alarm. It would despite the alarm, you will still be late. Why does this happen? Because the body doesn't want to leave the bed. Mm. The weather is cold. They say, if the body doesn't want to leave the bed, leave the bed and your body will follow you. Mm. Mm. Because it's you that have to make that deliberate effort. So, when you set your alarm, sometimes we we'll think we are strong, we'll wake up, so you just stretch your hand and off the alarm. And you say, I want to sleep maybe a little more. I'm already awake, I'll get up. Rather than doing that, set your alarm for another reminder. Mm. So mm. that maybe first five minutes, another five minutes, another reminder. Rather than you stretching your hand to put the alarm off and move and getting ready and getting uh, to a place on time is really our effort. God has given us the wisdom. I have uh, my son. He is always late to program. My last one. He's never quick. And so we are on him. And then you say, oh, mommy, I'm making efforts. And he's really trying. He's trying not to be late. But I told him, I said, you don't want this to happen. Maybe you have an interview or you have a plane to catch. I said, if it happens, you are going to lose money. You don't want it to happen. So we don't want our lateness to go beyond unexpected. So we should make deliberate effort, deliberate effort not to be late for activities. Praise the Lord. Amen. If your body does not want to leave the bed, leave the bed for the body. Leave the bed. And the body will follow and you. And the body will follow you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Make effort. Make effort. You must make effort. This way you make effort that the Lord will help you. Amen. Amen. Uh, who is in Acts 4? Acts 2.24? Anthony? Acts 2.24? Yeah. Ask 242, I think. Ask 242. 42? Yeah. Oh, okay. Acts 242. Okay. Yeah. Acts 242. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' 
doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. This was the early church. The brethren, what did they do? They devoted themselves to the apostles. Apostles teaching and fellowshipping to the breaking of bread and prayers. Amen. You know, this is what our church is all about. I encourage you to come. Let's have fellowship together. Let's pray. Let's learn the word of God together. This was how the early church grew. Devotion, commitment. You know, you have, be a stakeholder. I've always told us that the church does not belong to me. I've been issued from the very beginning. Jesus said, thou art Peter upon this rock. I'll build my church and the gate of hell will not prevail against it. So let Jesus be in charge. I have a part to play. You have a part to play. If I'm there to teach, I am not there to listen, then the system is not complete. If you are there to learn and I'm not there to teach, then the system is not complete. Praise the Lord. The early disciples, let us be like them. The early converts, let us be like them. What did they do? They devoted themselves to the apostles, listening to teaching. Teaching is very important. When you listen to teaching, listen to the word of God, your faith will grow. You'll be able to stand on your own tomorrow, no matter the situation. Because you have dug a deep foundation for your salvation. Amen? So I want to encourage you again, and I need you to encourage others. Like we read from uh, Hebrews 10.25, encouraging one another. At the end of this program, these studies, look at those that are here today and those that are not here, send the text messages. Why were you not at Bible study? Bible study was interesting today. This was what we studied. You are encouraging the person. And those that are here, send message to those that are here today. This was what I gained from Bible study today. What did you gain? You share. He said, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowshipping to the breaking of bread and prayers. Teaching, fellowshipping, eating, and praying. Let us have these uh, activities in our work with God in our church where we meet together to pray, where we meet together to learn, where we meet together to share bread together. And the Lord, and what happened? And when we do this, if you read verse 40, Anthony, please, can you read verse 42, 42, 43, and 44? Okay. Okay, 42. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. Mm. Praise the Lord. So we, if we as a new church, as a young church, practice it the way the, the early church did, then what happens? The Bible says in verse 42, the fear of them came upon everyone around because they saw the love, they saw the unity, they saw the cooperation. And what happened? And all who believed were together in one accord. They had things in common. They shared, shared in each person's problem. When James was arrested by Herod and killed, the church did nothing. But when Peter was arrested, the Bible said the church prayed earnestly for Peter. While Peter was in prison, God sent his angel to release him because the church prayed. So let us as a church continue to pray for one another. Amen. Amen. And then before you know it, the, 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 the story of our love for one another will spread and others who want to come join us and serve the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 
the, the, the scripture, the, the writing here says, how many of us like going late into the examination halls or walk? If you go late to the exam hall, you'll be embarrassed and uh, you will not be composed to write. If you go late to work, become a perpetual habit, you'll be fired. How many of us will be given the opportunity to have a meeting with a bishop or our head of state, president, prime minister, and will decide to go there a minute late? Nobody. I won't, I don't know if you will. If you will, please, it's not a good thing that you're supposed to meet with your bishop you're supposed to meet with your president, the premier, and uh, the prime minister, and you want you want to go there late. No, nobody does it. No reasonable person would do it. You want to be there on time. Even for your graduation, you need to be to practice to sit to arrive on time. Your secular work, there is time for it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, many of us will spend time discussing or doing one thing or the other with friends, brethren, or work, etc. at the time that we ought to be going to church, evangelism, Bible study, and other spiritual engagement. Sluggishness, sluggishly to the meeting and walking in as if they have tried, tied a, a mighty stone on their legs, praise the Lord. When you are late, don't come sluggishly. Be fast, rush in. Let that sense of urgency be in you when you are coming late to church. Amen. Come on time so that you can have time to pray. You have time to interact with brethren, fellowshipping, as it was in the case of their early church. They, they, come, they came together for teaching and fellowshipping. If you come early, you will join in the work of the setup. You will join in, you have time for fellowship. I have time to interact with you. You have time to interact with me before the service starts. And at the end of the service, we still have time to interact with one another. But when some people come late, they just take the work of God as if uh, nobody cares. No, please know that. Somebody cares and somebody is watching. The Heavenly Father is watching. May God forgive us as we keep on treating the appointment, appointment time with God as if he is our servant. If you don't know, know it now that you have missed a lot of blessing you ought to have gotten in fellowship or Bible study because of the sin of lateness and absenteeism. Let us take it seriously. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let us take coming to fellowship seriously. Don't be absent. If you're going to be absent, please let your pastor know, let your church leaders know that you are going to be absent. And it should not be for pleasing reasons. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on time. Let it be your description is that he's regular and punctual. Not the one that is regular, but not punctual, or the one that is not regular. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. It is important both in our spiritual work and in our careers. Redeeming the time. Plan your time, plan your resources so that you will benefit from it and be able to support and encourage others. Let your own lifestyle be an encouragement to others. Your punctuality should encourage others. Your regularity should encourage others. Don't say, uh, sometimes we say, uh, the church is that they are not going to start at exactly 10. They won't start as a, okay, they won't start. If everybody has that mind, then there will be nobody there even at 10. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. 
My question and my query is, why do we treat the things of God carelessly with levity, but we treat other things with more importance? If you have booked to watch a movie in the theater, you don't go late because you will miss a part of it. Not so, yes. But when it is time for church, we don't take it seriously. From today, let us repent from it and let us begin to take the things of God more important than any other things. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have about uh, 40 minutes more. Any questions or contributions? If there is no, co any questions or contributions? We should stop here today. We are going to pray. If there's no question, we are going to pray. We are going to examine your life and ask God to help you. Go to examine your life. How have I been treating the work of God? Have I been treating, am I one of the, am I one of the five foolish virgins or am I one of the wise ones? Have I been redeeming my time? How am I using my time and the resources God has put at my disposal? What can I do to improve? Leave the bed, set your alarm multiple times. Set your alarm multiple times and discipline yourself. Tell yourself, I don't want to go late. It's review, review, review. Lord, help me. Bow down your heads and ask God to help you. Help me, Lord. I don't want to go late. I don't want to discourage others. I want to be an encouragement to others. I want to be that guy that is regular and punctual. Help me to be committed, oh Lord, to the work of the ministry. That I will not treat your work with levity. Say it doesn't matter. Should I be the first to be there? Growing up, we're told that if fellowship is seven o'clock, at seven o'clock, God takes his seat waiting for us. Just as it is wrong for us to keep our president, our prime minister, our premier, our government officials, our supervisors waiting, it is also very wrong to keep God waiting. There is this story we heard, whether that true or not, I don't know, but it, it, it makes sense that at the beginning of the fellowship, if fellowship is eight o'clock, an angel comes to take attendance at eight o'clock. And after eight, you may be in the church, you may have paid the highest tithes, you may have led the music, you may have preached. As far as heaven's attendance is concerned, you were late, you were absent. See another time that the angel comes to take take records is during offering. The third time an angels come to take attendance is sh shortly before closing. Some people come late, they rush away at, at offering time, they are grumbling. If you have to give, give. If you don't have to give, please don't grumble. If you are going to give at all, give cheerfully. God, the Lord let, lost a cheerful giver. If you have not to give, God understands. Don't give to please the pastor or please anyone. Give to satisfy God who has given to you. So don't give grudgingly. Then please don't rush away. The president has not left the meeting. You cannot leave the meeting before him. So God has not left the meeting. We have not shared the grace. We have not said, 
Goodbye, I'll see you next week. You just leave. So in the eyes of heaven, you may not have been present at all. Again, it's better to be late than never. That is why I say, do not neglect the assemblies of one another. Treat the work of God with respect. You won't say, oh, because I'm, I'm already late for work today, I won't go. Then if you do it in two weeks, you'll be fired. Help me, Lord. I want to be a better person. I want to manage my time well. I don't want to waste my time and or waste another person's time. Give me wisdom. Let me know when to leave. When I visit somebody, let me know when to leave. When I'm on a call with somebody, let me know when to say, no, I'm okay. Help me to know when the other person does no longer need me. Give me wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Uh, Brother Todd, can you please lead us in closing prayers? Todd, are you still there? Thank you, Lord, for this time we've uh, had to, to, to read your word and study your word, Lord. And we just thank you, Father, for the for everything about this uh, this platform, Lord. We just thank you, Father, for it. And I ask you, Lord, to bless the people that could be here tonight and bless them all, Lord. And I just pray for God for and safe uh, safety for everybody that, that's here tonight, Lord. We just praise you and I thank you, Lord, for for this day, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, again, thank you for coming today. Shed when when we post these uh, messages, please try and make comments on your Facebook and share with other people. Then invite them to join us. I want to thank uh, Brad James for joining us for the first time today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be meeting again on next week, Wednesday at seven o'clock. Of course, our Sunday service is going to be by 8 a.m., starting 8 a.m. at uh, 461 Park Avenue, opposite the New Market Library. Let's share the grace and fellowship. By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. Thank you for coming, and God bless you. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you.